Hello everyone, welcome to Quantum Kuruji. So today in this video we are going to talk uh, all the details about uh, transition state calculations. Uh, I was receiving so many emails regarding this transition state calculation, how to uh, get transition state because sometimes it is very difficult in case of metal complexes and the reaction mechanism to get the transition state. Okay. Uh, first of all, there are several ways to get transition state and uh, there are uh, direct way to get uh, using heat and trial method and there are uh, QST2 method, QST3 methods, uh, they, are, they are also available. So in case of QST2 method, uh, Q, QST2, so what we do is we give the uh, reactant and the product and system decide the transition state. But uh, most of the time it results in a failure and it's not easy to get you know transition state. Uh, first of all, you have to try each and every, uh, you know, aspect of uh, all these calculations to get your uh, specific transition state. Uh, here I will show you a specific, you know, uh, some way to get your transition state and some uh, specific keywords to tackle those problems uh, while getting your transition state. So first of all, I will show you an output file. Actually, I was performing a transition state calculation on the structure and this is that structure here. Uh, so this is a metal complex, okay. So I was expecting, this is a, you know, com metal complex and this is a ligand which is trying to approach this metal. So I was expecting a, you know, uh, imaginary frequency corresponding to this, uh, this phosphorus and palladium linkage but after running the calculation what i observe i observe a negative frequency and i observe a negative frequency if you see animate it it is not corresponding to the you know the phosphorus and palladium this linkage it is something to do with the you know, rotation of this uh, allyl group which is not of my interest means what is happening i, I, I tried several time and uh, all time I am getting this rotation okay even uh, like what are the possible ways is available I tried everything even I used QS T2 method QS2 method and uh, still uh, like problem is there so what to do in those cases so uh, if you remember early in videos I have talked about the scan calculation so those scan calculation will be very helpful here and uh, it will uh, you know it will help to get the transition state the specific transition state how to get that so what is the solution first way is whenever you're performing a transition state calculation make sure you are used like first you try with you know uh, normal uh, transition state calculation then try to decrease the step size like from 10 uh, uh, like uh, i think uh, by default just roughly around 10 so like yeah something so you can start decreasing the step size 10 5 3 and if it is extreme case you can go to one also okay if it is working well fine if it's still not working uh, i'll suggest some other keywords that i will show you that uh, you can try with it and then you can use the you know int equals to ultra fine int equals to super fine and uh, those things also you can try so in this case since nothing is working what i will do is i will um, put this ligand slightly away from the metal maybe a little like one like maybe one angstrom more away from it and then what i will do uh, i will scan the distance from palladium from this phosphorus to the palladium this bond length i will scan okay so after scan calculation, I will get a, you know, data for the, you know, uh, energy versus your, uh, you know, geometries. And then I will see whichever is the transition state there. Um, that I will take and I will perform a transition state. So whatever I'm telling, I will, I will show you, it will be you know, helpful. So first, I will show you the keywords that you can try here. What I have used is. If you see here, I have used uh, opticals to calc for uh, this at calcapsi. Even I tried with, you know, uh, calc all 
means all of the force constants. Even I tried with recalc uh, steps like five or ten. The, nothing is working. And here the maximum step size I have given one. Even I tried with three, five, ten. All oh, I tried nothing working. So I have to decrease and I came one. And also I have uh, included CPHF grid equals ultra fine. Yeah, this helps in getting the net, uh, you know a specific negative frequency. And I tried with this ultra fine and SCF, and this also I tried. So nothing is working actually. And uh, other keywords that you can try it. So first of all, what you can do is you can try in equals to ultra fine. Then this keyword is this is also not working. Try with this one. So whenever you are performing transition state calculation, my request will be also include uh, some kind of dispersion correction. Here I am including the uh, DFT D3 correction, uh, this dispersion D3 correction here uh, in the, this DFT method. Uh, manually I am giving this uh, D3 correction, okay? Because since there is a weak interaction, so this is very you know useful. Not only useful, this is more you know precise kind of thing that has to be you know it will be more accurate as compared to your other. Uh, uh, other functional. Also, uh, you can use uh, recalculate FC at uh, some steps, or in case if it is working, just calc FC. Also, you can try. You can try several things, and uh, decreasing or increasing the max step. And also, in case if it is ultra fine is not working, you can go with the uh, inputs too. Uh, if uh, super fine, uh, like ultra fine is not working, you can go for super fine. Okay. And these are always, you know, the first you try all this. If it is nothing is working, in those cases, what I suggest is go for a scan calculation. Okay, so in scan calculation, what will so I have already shown you how to do perform a scan calculation. If you don't know how to perform a scan calculation, I'll put the video link in the description. Go and follow that video and see how to form a, perform a scan calculation. Generally, what we do, suppose you want to perform a scan calculation, I will just give you a you know, very fast. Uh, so, you are having this. So, I want to perform a, you know, uh, scan calculation between this. So, first I want to increase the bond, like distance between this uh, phosphorus and this metal. So, what I will do is, I will uh, slightly increase right now, it is 3.2, I will make it 3.3 something, whatever is your choice. So I have fixed atom one. This I have fixed, and this I am making away. Okay. So this coordinate I will save it, save it, and that I will perform for. No, before that I will uh, make the input here. Now I have increased the distance. Now go to the tool, and here you go to the redundant coordinate. In redundant coordinate, go to add, and here you. So we are interested in this, and this right this two so you can see this is selected here and from here you need to select the bond length right and in add menu here we are uh, scanning scan coordinate these are the step size suppose uh, here right now the distance between phosphorus and palladium is roughly around 3.3 angstrom right so I want to decrease the, you know, in scan calculation from 3.3 to, I want to come to around 1.5 angstrom. So uh, the, you know, uh, here the size will be in minus. Uh, suppose I'm giving, you know, minus one angstrom. So from 3.3 angstrom, it will calculate 3.2 and then following down. So I'm giving uh, steps, uh, steps uh, 50. So uh, because I want to calculate, um, from 3.3 angstrom to roughly around uh, you know 2 angstrom up to 2 it will calculate so i have given the step 50 and uh, size as 0.1 and then click on ok and now you can click on calculate and go to the calculation setup and here uh, scan is already selected and then you can go for method whatever method you are choosing here and then submit the calculation. Once the calculation is over, uh, you will see this log file, open it. 
Okay. So this is the log file. Go to this scan and you will see when this kind of plot will be there. Total energy versus this scan coordinate. So if you see in the initial structure, this is the initial structure. Here I have taken as 3.2 angstrom. Uh, that is the distance between the you know metal and that phosphorus. If you see here, it is 3.2 angstrom. Now I started decreasing the value. Here it is 3.1, then 3, then 2.9. So if you see at 2.9, this is a kind of transition state, okay? And when it is at 2.8, uh, the energy is decreasing. Further, it is connected and at around 2.3, there is a bond formed between palladium and the metal. So, I guess this would be the, you know, um, product side, okay. But we are interested in the transition state. So, this is the, you know, here the high energy, uh, you know, uh, this is the high energy transition state here. So, we will take this geometry, okay. Just this alone. This also you can consider a transition state. But the thing is, if you see the bond this length, it is very you know small. So when the bond length is less than optimum, in that case uh, also the energy will go high, and that is not a transition state. And you should not take the geometry. You should always take this geometry. Okay, and uh, this geometry is not in the you know bonding uh, range, and this is not out of the bonding range, like uh, interaction range. So there is a ch maximum chance of getting transition state over here. So I'll take this geometry. This is that geometry. I'll go to the file menu and uh, click on the save. And now you can save this geometry. Okay. Save this geometry. Once you have saved the geometry, then you can perform. Save this geometry. So I have already saved it. Once you have saved the geometry, this is the geometry. Now you can copy this geometry and perform a TS calculation on this. Okay. This coordinate you can take and perform a TS calculation. So once you perform the TS calculation, what I observe is so this is the input for my TS calculation that I gave. You want to see? You can see. So here I have used uh, calc FC and my step size I have chosen one. I'm using V3Lib with def 2 svp uh, basis set and empirical discussion, uh, dispersion correction that is D3. I'm adding here and all these things I'm using for my transition state. And so once the calculation is over this time, I got the specific, uh, you know, uh, specific negative frequency that I was expecting. So if you go to the vibration and you see an active frequency here, if you animate, so this was my expectation that a palladium phosphorus linkage, that bond, okay, see, this is the my active frequency that I was expecting. So I got the final my active frequency at the transition state. Earlier, whatever the transition state I was getting, I will show you again. It was not up to the mark actually. So this was the initially I was getting a transition state which has a negative frequency but it was corresponding to the rotation of this allyl group right. This is the uh, rotation of allyl group here. But now I got a specific negative frequency here in this case which correspond to this uh, polarity phosphorus linkage. See. So this is the way to you know tackle your transition state, and in some case if it is also not working, uh, what we can do is see. In this case, uh, I will just close this. So here, what we are observing is we are having a negative frequency, right, uh, which correspond to this rotation. So what we can do is go to the manual displacement, and here you make it on the product side. Now, uh, now, 
uh, your uh, allyl group is relaxed. Now what you do, you perform a you know relaxed calculation, geometry optimization on this product, and then what will you observe? There will be no negative frequency at all. Now what you do is increase the distance between palladium and this phosphorus, this metal and your phosphorus. Increase the distance. Uh, here right now it is around 2.5. Just make it 2.8 or 2.9, and this performance is calculation. Okay, so you, you'll get your desired transition state in that way also. So whenever you are not getting your proper uh, transition state, sometimes it is very, you know, frustrating also. So you can try all these ways. If you uh, find this video very helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any doubt pertaining to this video, put it in the comment section.